गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन थैंक्स अ लॉट फॉर एक्सचेंज फॉर मीडिया बिजनेस वर्ल्ड ओके फॉर इन्वाइटिंग अस टू गिव अ पर्सपेक्टिव फ्रॉम अ कंज्यूमर लेंस लॉट टाइम्स वी टॉक अबाउट ब्रांड बिल्डिंग ओके फ्रॉम मोर फ्रॉम मार्केटिंग पर्सपेक्टिव ऑल्सो बट ड्यूरिंग दीज टाइम्स इट्स इंपॉर्टेंट टू अंडरस्टैंड वेर इज अ कंज्यूमर करेंटली वॉट इज इट लीज सींग ओके एंड लुक एट द एंटायर पर्सपेक्टिव फ्रॉम देयर लेंस uh there are challenges which are currently which we know is facing the world overall okay and there are certain challenges which even india is not really immune to uh let's look at what are these challenges how do really uh, the consumer really see uh, where the brands are placed currently in these challenges and what do we need to do going forward so it will be four four to five different aspects that we will talk about right now but before that first we all know okay what's really happening currently okay uh, yes we moved away from covid but post covid okay there was uh, the ukraine war which really happened the global, global conflict then there is inflation and then there is a potential recession which is there across the world yes the recession not so much for india but there is yes there is a slight slowdown which might happen which we are really seeing uh, possibly in the gdp numbers which also will get released today for the q3 numbers in in, in fact uh, we can see this from world panel data also that there is a concern among consumers okay 92% of them have spoken about inflation okay as being one of the main concerns for them <clears throat> other kanta surveys have clearly mentioned okay multiple aspects recently we had done a survey very close to the union budget where we found very clearly uh, consumers talking about inflation as their top most concern in india yeah and also gets reflected in the fmcg volumes which have actually come down plus there are a few other aspects in terms of the tech layoffs job loss etc okay so what are we really trying to do today okay we'll try and understand these four aspects because these are burning questions and questions which we as a canter receive a lot from brand builders okay from clients quite a bit in terms of understanding where the consumer is currently on each of these aspects so first is more in terms of understanding uh, inflation okay uh, what are they doing right now what is happening to their current basket what is the mix between essentials and discretionary spends how is it really changing from there moving on to the entire price premium question what's really happening out there okay can brands in these times command a price premium okay and how do they really command a price premium during these times then okay looking at can it really be media dark okay because for example you know funding is a challenge yeah or if there is a little bit of a slowdown which is really happening there is a budget cut so can i go media dark and for how long then looking at uh, digital in particular okay how can it really create a greater impact because more and more spends obviously are going to digital so what is really happening out there and finally the entire aspect of india versus bharat you know urban versus rural divide okay are there opportunities and even in among those opportunities okay what do brands need to do out there but first okay let's look at the tenets of brand building because those are constant those are not going to change okay whatever really happens so uh, from kanta brand z and this is a report that we really publish every year in india and globally and across 30 plus markets okay in countries uh, out here yeah what is really happening out there is that we always talk about strong brands and strong brands always tend to deliver very well okay even in a turbulence time okay they go down lesser and they also bounce back much more strongly so uh, that's first aspect of investing in brand building is absolutely critical irrespective of the times we are in currently second aspect is that okay when we look at the brand and their equity we clearly see that equity is a function okay wherein actually it drives overall valuation so there's a valuation change okay which really happens when your brand equity or brand power actually goes up and we have done this analysis across multiple brands over a period of time where we see brands which have actually had an improvement in their brand equity they've had a jump of 98% in terms of overall brand valuation that's more from an importance of brand building plus okay how do you really do that more in terms of uh, saliency and being meaningful okay and why are these two pillars absolutely critical okay because when we really talk about saliency meaningful and differentiation okay which is the overall cantar uh, model we look at okay saliency or mental availability does the brand come to your mind okay immediately or not is it relevant for you and do you have affinity with the brand and meaningful okay is a square which is like almost the four pillars of your brand okay four corners of your brand 
what really happens is that you know, okay, even if I am slightly lower on saliency or differentiation because there is competition which can ca catch up quickly on differentiation like what we really saw you know, okay, between in telecom, okay, geo, airtel, etc. over the period of time what really happened. We have seen meaningful to be a most powerful metric because that is the foundation. That is really a uh, aspect where you really uh, are looking at building affinity as well as relevance with consumers. And a brand which is actually improving in saliency actually has a jump of 16% in valuation, but actually a brand which improves on both aspects of saliency and meaningful. There's a 31% increase. That's a huge jump, almost double, 2x. Okay, the key question, inflation, what's really happening out here? First is more in terms of the concerns. Okay, when we have done multiple surveys, we have seen that uh, across the world, uh, inflation economy right now is in the top three in terms of overall concerns. Inflation leads in that in terms of 31%. Yeah, uh, and COVID has actually almost okay, uh, moved out of the top three right now. But there is a change which is happening and inflation is clearly hogging headlines right now. And what's really happening? Okay, the mix between discretionary spends and spends which can be, for example, for big purchases, long term, etc. Yeah, globally there is a change. So yes, on basics, on household items, etc., we may still end up spending. Okay, and that's almost like an essential. But there are certain aspects like dining out, okay, or large purchases or a new car. Globally, okay, there's a concern. But Having said that, okay, why is it not really a concern in India? Because the opportunity, especially on big spends, is still higher. Uh, if you see okay, where India is placed currently, there are only 22 cars per household, okay, in, in terms of uh, 22 cars per thousand households, okay, which are there. So there's a huge opportunity which has moved from 12 a decade back. So there's still a huge opportunity and that's the reason you're seeing that overall sentiment out there, plus the aspiration. But what's really happening is, <clears throat> When we look at India in particular uh, right now, and this is data for uh, APAC versus India, we clearly see that there is an increase which is really happening more from a uh, value perspective okay, on essentials, but on personal care on a few other products, okay, it is actually going, it is flat. Yeah, it's stable okay, versus the last year. So there's a clear difference between how essentials versus personal products are getting uh, classified currently. But even on essentials, okay, consumers are trying to make a differentiation out there. So, okay, because the budget is X, there's the X number of disposable income and inflation is eating up some of those disposable income also. What's really happening is that people are actually then okay, looking at frugality. In terms of, for example, okay, can I actually okay, use lesser number of lesser oil? Or can I actually use a toothpaste? Okay, and this is a study which was done even in Thailand recently where we saw and val it was validated very clearly that people using just three-fourth on the brush versus the full uh, part of the brush. So that's how consumers are trying to save more during these times. Buying essentials, okay, but uh, trying to save as much as possible. Uh, even uh, on that, in, uh, what's also happening is that people are moving from branded to unbranded in certain categories. Like, for example, washing powder. Okay, there's a clear increase that we have seen on the unbranded side currently. Okay, as well as okay, the mass segment uh, washing powder actually increasing from 39% to 41%. So there is a shift which is happening, a slow shift which is happening during these times, even on essentials. <clears throat> So how do brands really okay, maintain their margin and pricing power? And that's an important uh, aspect because, uh, and this data is for Europe. Okay, what you see out there, and I'll touch upon this first and before coming to the India data. Uh, what you really see out here is that if you look at 2016 to now, so the overall uh, purchase frequency is actually coming down. Visits are okay, coming down and the basket size is increasing in Europe. Yeah. Every time I'm going, I'm buying bigger packs, bigger basket size, and purchase frequency is coming down. But that's not true for the developed, developing world, okay? What is really happening out here is that the price elasticity, okay, on large SKUs, okay, is a lot more sensitive, okay? So India is a lot more sensitive on those aspects. So if you, you can see a gap across all categories, except for salty snacks, yeah, where you can see that the sensitivity is very high, for example, biscuits, or even deodorants, or a few other products, there, there's a high sensitivity and the reason that's really happening is that if if you are going for a, okay, uh, we all know a large SQ actually is far more beneficial, okay, in terms of price per unit. But when someone is actually going and visiting, okay, when he's actually purchasing, 
the outlay is much more when you're buying a large SKU. So they end up buying a small SKU still and try and see that how can I stretch that small SKU for a longer period of time. That's what is really happening out here in India. Yes, okay, we just spoke about and there was a question on sale and discount. Yeah, uh, and this data is very clear. Okay, it can work for a particular period of time, but uh, it actually falls through. Like, for example, okay, when we really look at promotions, okay, so there have been multiple times promotions have happened for Tesco, but then after the promotion has stopped, okay, the brand sales have actually come down. So there is very clearly an impact and how much you can really run the discount for a period of time in certain category. Hence, value becomes important rather than just discounting. And how can you really charge value and how can you charge a premium and get value? It is, okay, again, looking at what drives premiumness okay, across categories. Yeah, from the Kantar uh, Branzi database, we clearly see that differentiation is absolutely critical with meaningful. Okay, 49% of the weightage comes from differentiation if you need to drive premiumness. Yeah, differentiation is not easy, okay, and it is more about uniqueness and setting trends, etc but absolutely critical to drive differentiation to command a price premium. <clears throat> there can't be a better example than this. Okay. We all know this brand, okay, beer, uh, premium beer, okay, Indian beer, which actually okay, uh, stands a lot for differentiation. Wheat-based beer, okay, which uh, is also uh, commanding a premium currently, but consumers pay for it because they see a lot of value in it. So these are some of the examples where we can clearly see that how a pricing power can be attained based on the, what the consumer really sees as value. <clears throat> Looking at you know, this particular question, okay, in terms of should I really go media dark? Okay, what is the time period for, uh, for which can I really go media dark? Yeah. So what we did was, okay, we ran a time series analysis okay, on continuous data okay, across different measures. And we looked at okay, that uh, if there's a budget cut for almost six months, and then what really happens to the brand in terms of awareness, okay, in terms of communication? Yeah, and will the brand really bounce back quickly later on if we start spending? What we realized was that you need to, it will bounce back. But the spends out here, what you can see, are much higher than even this time period. So the budget cut at that point of time can impact the scores, including communication, et cetera. But to bounce back and reach the same level, it will take a lot more investment and effort. So sustainability is key even during these periods, even if it is not large spends. And what are consumers really saying? Okay, uh, during these times, what do they need to see and what do they want to see? Offer something which has got a positive perspective. Okay, talk about what, how you can really help me during these times. These are the two important elements and aspects which are critical. Okay. Summarizing these three sections right now. Okay, more first in terms of value, not discounts. What we really saw. Create a meaningful differentiation to command a price premium. Yeah. Third is. Look at the SKU mix, okay, and can there be smart SKUs in between if there's too wide a gap between the lowest SKU and the highest SKU, yeah? Uh, finally, continue investing in your brand. Don't stop, okay, uh, advertising, but at least have some measures for sustainability. So digital advertising, how do we really create impact? And the reason this question really came up because we do get a lot of questions from clients in terms of digital actually, uh, in terms of spends increasing quite a bit, okay? What is really happening? How do I really measure my ROI out there? And which kind of ads and communication will work? Because I can put a number of digital ads, okay, but what is going to work for me or not? So first is, okay, from an internet penetration uh, perspective, okay, and if you really see the overall numbers, uh, which have been projected till 2025, okay, there is a growth, almost 900 million who will actually have uh, active internet access, yeah, on a daily basis uh, by 2025 which is again a fairly huge number, and that growth is also happening. Second thing is the, the overall time spent is also increasing. We clearly see that. Because, for example, duration of time being spent on the mobile, that has increased by 21% from 2019 to now. Yeah. Similarly, you know, the daily active users are 30%. Urban is almost 90% right now overall. 30% in terms of increase, and 90% in terms of the overall urban penetration, active users. What is also happening is, you know, through multiple other studies that we have found out okay, that uh, the digital 
uh, touch points and their impact is overall increasing. If you see from 2018 to 21, there's a clear increase which is really happening through surveys that we have done to understand the impact of the digital touch points okay, on the brand. So what are we saying now? Okay, so since there's a lot of advertising, okay, yeah, and the digital touch points are also increasing, okay, from a solution perspective, what we had done a few years back, a couple of years back, okay, I had launched Link AI. Okay, Link is actually the advertising uh, pre-testing tool that we have. But okay, what we felt was that it is very important for marketers to get something really on the tap. Okay, so if you uh, give an ad, okay, and if you test an ad, okay, you don't need to really wait for two, three weeks or even uh, 15 days to get the results. 15 minutes is what it takes for you to really just get the results in terms of behavioral metrics, creative inputs, okay, and what can happen to the brand. And this is, okay, again, mined from database over a period of time, uh, over the last many years, okay, uh, and is also India specific. Comes in, in a very neat dashboard, yeah, wherein you can actually see all the metrics at one go. You can even, okay, have a comparison across different ads that you have tested on the same metric, yeah, uh, and is also, okay, very specific to the, to the overall context, if it is YouTube or the platform, uh, Facebook, across. Finally, okay, looking at okay, India and Bharat, is there a need for a differentiated strategy? And there are four aspects we'll just address out here. One is more from a consumer involvement perspective and awareness. Second is from a creative. Third is from a media angle. Yeah. First, more in terms of awareness, okay, what will we see across studies that we have done, and this is again Kantar rural syndicated studies on brand that we do. We clearly see a difference in terms of urban versus rural in terms of awareness and average awareness and recall. For some categories, the difference is even higher, which is like, for example, skin cleansing, etc. T is still okay, moderate. Yeah, but you can also see, for example, like hair care, okay, 3.3 versus 4.8. So there are differences which are clearly there across categories that we see. So there's a definitely a road ahead, okay, even in terms of building awareness currently. Second is okay, we took took up two basically two segments and two uh, sectors okay and completely different one in terms of uh, the cpg and second was retail to see are there differences in urban rural in terms of understanding so first was okay, more in terms of looking at uh, urban versus rural okay in the oral care category very clear in rural aspiration and optimism drives it very uh, very clearly out there versus in urban is a lot more functional okay and higher order benefits okay whitening okay etc and multiple other aspects really come through similarly okay when you really look at retail out here you can actually see that for them okay when they're visiting a store or even a retail outlet the ambience okay and the store okay has to be of a particular way for them to feel because it's an occasion for them to go visit and even actually purchase so these are some of the differences which really come through very clearly between urban and rural across categories Second is, okay, again question and a lot of times okay, CTV penetration is roughly around 6%, okay, but from a connected TV perspective also, you can see 33% of the overall number is actually coming from rural right now for connected TV. Yeah, fairly sizable number if you really look at the overall mix currently from a media perspective. So uh, mobile as well as uh, uh, TV in particular, okay, how it is being used out there. Yeah, and finally, from an advertising and a creative perspective, what are the three or four things that brands need to do? First is, okay, look at executions more in terms of, okay, are they really simple? Okay, do they talk about the moment of truth currently? Yeah, and are they more of the slice of life executions? Because that's more easier for people to understand out there, the rural consumers in particular. Yeah, storylines, okay, keep it as simple as pos possible and when you're really looking at analogies, metaphors, etc., they need to add to the plot very clearly, okay, rather than being separate for consumers to understand. And finally, more the most important aspect, singular message, okay, not having layered messages out there, absolutely singular message is critical. So these are more in terms of India versus Bharat also, uh, the key learnings from an advertising as well as media and uh, involvement, consumer involvement perspective. Thank you.